Bonjour à tous et bienvenue à cette seconde journée à l'ETHCC. Je suis aujourd'hui en compagnie de Hilmar de Gelato Network. Uh, Hilmar, how is it going? All good, how about yourself? Oh, fine, thank you very much. A bit tired, but fine, thank you. Likewise. <laughs> uh, could you introduce yourself, please? Of course, yeah. My name is Hilmar. I work at a project called Gelato. Um, and I founded the project two years ago uh, together with a friend called Luis. Okay. Um, yeah, we've been into crypto since 2016, roughly, when the DAO happened. Um, we co founded a blockchain consultancy before in uh, Berlin, where we did like uh, projects for large German, like large enterprises in the German speaking areas. And uh, But this was super boring after a while, even though we learned a lot. And then we started transitioning to hacking on um, public stuff on Ethereum. And we went to a lot of hack hackathons. I went to ECC, for example, three years ago here. Okay. Also to ETH Paris, where uh, we won a prize for what is back then called uh, uh, ETHLAND, now AVE, okay. like the, the first uh, sponsorship prize they gave. And yeah, so we went to a couple of hackathons um, and, and won a couple of prizes. And then at some point we started Gelato, which kind of it developed out of a project that we did together with Gnosis in Berlin. Um, and yeah, now we are here. We are a small team of 12 people. And yeah, we're super happy to be here at ECC. Great, thank you very much. Um, so, could you explain uh, Gelato? What is it, and how does it work? Sure. So, Gelato is a more of a developer-focused middleware project. But um, in short, Gelato is a protocol that automates smart contract executions on Ethereum or on other networks, um, and basically. Um, developer teams or protocol development teams, they use Gelato in order to outsource all their bot infrastructures. Um, and there's a problem on Ethereum, or not a problem, but many people think smart contracts are like these super autonomous vehicles that just do everything by themselves, right? But actually, they are not that smart. They're pretty dumb. <laughs> um, and they don't actually do anything by themselves. They only execute certain logic, like, hey, I want to send some money to my mother when you personally send a transaction to that smart contract, so to say. Yeah. And you have to send a transaction, and then they send the smart contract will send the money on your behalf. But if you don't send a transaction, nothing will happen, right? And let's say, uh, in like the traditional sense, if you want to have a subscription, so to say, that you pay your mother every week, for example, uh, let's say 100 euros, right? Uh, what you would have to do normally, you would have to go there, and every week you have to craft a transaction yourself because there's no bank doing that for you. You have your keys, you have your wallet, and the funds will be there as long as you don't send the transaction for you. So what does it mean in order to automate certain transactions on Ethereum? You actually need to have bots in the background that actually su submit that transaction on your behalf or on someone else's behalf. And this is exactly what Gelato provides developers with. We provide them with a plug-and-play decentralized network of bots that they can just, without having to build, maintain, and run anything themselves, can plug into. And they provide them with arbitrary tasks to, let's say, monitor um, every week. Or they monitor the prices on a decentralized exchange. Or you monitor interest rates on that protocol. And if these things change, then these bots will submit transaction on your behalf. And in practice, um, projects like Instadep, um, KeeperDAO, um, AMMs like SperrySwap or SpookySwap or Phantoms or other like layer one networks as well, scaling solutions, they use Gelato in order to automate certain features and um, services on their smart contracts. Um, and they do so without having to run any of the underlying infrastructure. And this is basically the value add. We are kind of like the DevOps team of DeFi. Like okay. everyone just plugs into Gelato and they know they have this reliable decentralized network of bots that they can task to execute arbitrary transactions. Okay, uh, this is a long uh, explanation, yeah. but good one. Thank you very much. And uh, how did you come with the name Gelato? Yeah, so uh, we started... It's, uh, I, I'm pretty sure it's a private joke, no? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so uh, there are various stories to that. Um, and uh, there are, uh, is... Uh, um, a not safe for work story and okay. <laughs> safe for work so story. So keep it safe, please. I'll keep it safe. Yeah. So, um, like we we developed uh, Gelato out of a co-working space called Full Node in Berlin Kreuzberg, and uh, it's a co-working space run by Gnosis, and they gave us a grant at the beginning, and we sit there and developed it and bootstrapped it. And uh, basically, there was this, uh, there's this like best ice cream store, Hall of Berlin downstairs, where we went every day in the hot summer days and got a gelato. And we were brainstorming names at that time. And every DeFi project 
that c came out was like compound or like some financy techy name it was super boring and we kind of were the first food name okay. uh, and i think also started some craze around it afterwards now you have like a million different food yeah, I know <laughs> projects that. but uh, i think i'm pretty sure we were one of the, uh, maybe not the first but one of the first i think we are the first actually <laughs> but uh, yeah i would have to verify that um but yeah so we we thought okay let's just go with something funny that any, everyone loves and that we kind of indulge every day which was gelato okay great thank you very much what is for you the definition of defi oh yeah the um, the definition of defi and for me that ties back into Web3 in general um, is the ability for everyone in the world, mainly developers, but everyone to build very, very, in DeFi in particular, very sophisticated financial products within like a weekend. Um, usually like you had to have bank licenses, you have to have a lot of money in order to bootstrap all the regulatory stuff and all the um, compliance work around actually providing options or lending or borrowing or trading facility um, capabilities to your customers. And now I think the perfect example is um, InstaDeb, with whom we work together very closely. These guys, Samyak, um, for example, the CTO, they are they are like 20 or 21. Yeah. They build a system that has billions of dollars assets under management and they can build these applications without having to run any server infrastructure themselves. They don't have to worry about any compliance issues or something. Okay. They just build a front end and of course very nicely done and a lot of stuff also happening, happening in the background, but they plug into Ethereum to have the logic and the state in short. Then they plug into other middleware pieces like the graph in order to get the data from the chain to easily be able to display it. And for example, they plug into Gelato to easily automate certain functions on these smart contracts in order to provide users with the capabilities of automatically refinancing debt positions from Maker to other, for example, what they use Gelato with. And these guys are like beginning of 20 and they build like this huge financial product, right? Without knowing anything about it probably. So for me, this is the power of DeFi. Everyone can build them in like a weekend. You can hack together something and this was never possible before. And the, the spur of innovation this will create is uh, probably uh, was never been never done before. Okay, fine. Thank you very much. And I got a well. It's like a personal question. If you have to give an advice uh, to someone new to crypto, I mean the the field in general, uh, what could it be? If you have to give an advice, I don't know, to your mom, uh, family, friends, or whatever, someone who's never touched it before, mm. what could this advice be? Yeah. Um, I think it depends, like I, I'm very much like development focused, so I, I can definitely speak to like early developers, but maybe for like the everyday human uh, being, um, I think you, this space is quite diverse and it's not only about finance. Uh, for me, I had a, like I, I have a finance degree, so um, I was interested in that, monetary policies, everything. So mm -hmm. that's why Bitcoin, Ethereum and the DAO kind of like spurred an interest in me. But for like everyday persons, I think there are a lot of stuff that's going on. If you're into art with NFTs, if you're into collectibles, if you're into esports or um, virtual reality, like all these fields kind of are having some sort of connection with crypto and uh, can leverage it. And so just see what you like, what's your interest. For example, my mother is an artist, so she likes art and she's interested in NFTs. And this is how I could sure. explain it to her and just like go in and play with some of these applications, try it out, uh, get like $200 or 200 euros and just play around a bit, see what you can do with it and then read up on how it works and then get into the rabbit hole and just then you then you have to invest two or three years just really going deep if yeah. you really want to understand like everything but you can also stay like a bit of the periphery but yeah just just play with it basically okay and uh what is the common mistake uh made by i mean newcomers to this uh well newcomers or even uh i mean uh veterans uh, in this field um yeah so probably i think just being in the bubble, in the crypto bubble, okay. and trying, like, being exposed to these waves. Chasing dreams, no? Yeah, it's, it's, it's somehow, it's something like this. You're always either super euphoric and everything is like, this is changing the world right now and Elon Musk will accept it and every company <laughs> in the world will accept crypto from, from one day to another. And then it's like everyone is banning it, it will fail. Like, it's never this just middle ground. Yeah. And so um, I think just 
taking some distance from that and realizing that this technology will be the future, not only of finance, but of like value transfer in general. Um, um, and it will be the backbone of the new internet. And just being able to just step back and say, hey, it will take 15 years, 20 years, so <laughs> chill. <laughs> it will take some time, it won't yeah. happen overnight. Yeah. Definitely. Okay, well, thank you very much. Uh, and to conclude, uh, do you know something in French? As we are in France, in Paris right now. Oh, um, uh, we are close. I mean, uh, <laughs> you are German, so maybe you know something. Yeah, yeah. Um, I, I know some not for not safe for work sentences that. Well, I don't you, can <laughs> say, you can say it. Uh, I you don't can edit it at the end. I don't want to. I don't want to uh, say those. Um, but um, remember, your mom is watching it. My mom, hello, mom. No, I know. Um, uh, Allez le bleu. Yeah, Obviously, thank so you very much. Big Zinedine Zidane fan <coughs> myself. One of the best footballers I've ever played. So I watched him in the tw uh, 26 final in Berlin um, okay. against Italy, which of course not so great uh, where he got the red card, but he was one of my favorite players. So, allez le bleu. <laughs> Thank you very much, Ilmar. Thank you.